Good morning, good morning everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice in his presence. My dear friends and families, this morning uh, God has given one more day to see and to rejoice in his presence. Let's come in the presence of God and ask God, Lord, talk with us with the word of God this morning. Let's invite our guest, Pastor Steve Hamilton. He is going to praise the word of God. Let's invite him. Pastor, over to you, Pastor. Pastor, we cannot hear your word, voice. God bless you. I'm sorry. And we thank God for you this morning. And we praise God for everything that he's doing. We want to remain prayerful um, uh, concerning those that are having difficulties and those that are having situations that seemingly are uh, undescribable un to many of us. Uh, many people are going through circumstances and situations that you and I only would, would never want to have to endure. And so we want to remain prayerful um, for our brothers and sisters uh, that are uh, having difficulties in uh, various areas of life. Uh, financially, uh, we know that there's flooding going on in many regions uh, that uh, we are concerned about in India uh, and in other areas. Uh, there is uh, things that are happening and we want to always offer a prayer in our uh, substance, uh, our, our talents, our time to those that are in need and those that are in discomfort. Uh, we praise God today for what all he has done. And we, uh, as always, just want to encourage you uh, that this is the day that the Lord has made and we will shall re rejoice and be glad. There's many things uh, that you can be glad about. There's many things that you can take pleasure in knowing that God is a present help in the time of need and the time of trouble. The Bible says uh, that God will draw nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and contrite spirit. And so we're praying for you, those of you that are going through despair, dealing with sickness, dealing with disease, dealing with pestilence dealing with family issues and problems. We are praying for you, my wife, myself, our prayer team, our intercessory team, uh, as well as our partners in ministry. I ask my partners to come in agreement with us. And those of you that are watching, begin to like and begin to share. Uh, if you're watching by Facebook, if you're watching by YouTube, or if you're watching by any other outlet, or streaming platform, if you're listening by radio, we bid you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for Calvary Blood of Christ Ministries, and we thank God for uh, Pastor Batash and praying that God will continue to uh, move by his power and his spirit and send healing and deliverance and peace to his family. Amen, in Jesus' name, Pastor Miriam. Evangelist Miriam, Prophetess Lois Miriam, we praise God. Marie, we praise God for you today. Uh, and we thank God for all of you in Jesus' name. We're going to go right into the word of God today. We don't have as much time as we would like to have, but always offering up a prayer of thanksgiving. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you and praise you for all that you're doing and all that you will do and all that you have done. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up in our right mind, giving us the activities of our limbs. And we ask in right now in Jesus' name that you will have your way in the lives of your people. Begin to heal, begin to deliver. Let your blood cover, let your word prevail. We thank you, oh God, for everything that you've done, the good, the bad, the indifferent, that that we know of and that we don't know of. We thank you for protecting us. Even when our enemies came in, 
to eat of our flesh, you scattered them a thousand ways. And we thank you for it right now, God. And we praise you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus, touch, heal, and deliver, God. Have your way, oh God. Save somebody today by the word. Heal somebody by the word. Encourage your people through the word of God today. And we give you glory and honor for it right now. And we know that you can't do anything but fail. There's no failure in you. There's no lacking in you. There's no def deficiency in you. And your word says that if you cannot lie, that if you were a man that said it, you will come to pass. Now bring it to pass, God. Everything we've been praying for, everything we've been waiting for, everything that you promised, God, begin to bring it to pass. Manifest it, God, right now. And we believe your report, oh God. We don't believe what we see, but we see what we believe. And we believe that your word has already given us an antidote for sickness and disease. We believe that your word has already given us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. We believe that everything we need to accomplish and do in life, we can do it if we stay in you and abide in you and abide in your word. And we thank you for the word today in Jesus' name. We thank you for Calvary Blood of Christ Ministries and the work that they're doing across the world. And we thank you for partnering with them. We thank you for partnering them partnering with us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we thank you right now, God, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. Oh, last week, we talked about various things, but if there was ever a time, we need to be concerned about our faith. That time is now. We talked about in the book of Hebrews that uh, now faith, and we talked about now faith, it's faith that we need for something to happen right now. In order for us to live this victorious Christian life that we are seeking to live, it begins with acceptance of Jesus Christ as our Savior, as our Lord, as our strong tower. And faith as we have seen in our previous lessons, it desires something greater than what we were operating in. You see, we, 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 a lot of what we do and a lot of what we have done and accomplished in life, a lot of times is not according to faith. It was according to uh, monies and education, if I just make it real plain. It was according to uh, the government providing and so forth. But in this season, in this day, our faith must be something much greater. And our hope and our reliance must only be in Christ Jesus. You see, we are being challenged and we are facing obstacles on every hand, on every corner. There's always something new happening. That you are comfortable in your home and you have in you have shelter and you have uh, uh, a car or a moped, a motorcycle, or a transportation, a horse, whatever it is. You you have food in your pantry and you have the necessity. The necessities of life have been provided for you, but there are so many in life who does not have them. And we must be concerned about those people and pray for them. So as an awareness of someone else's life unseen who is very real, then it involves assurance resulting from obedience or trust in the Lord, in God, in our Father, for a better life. There's some people, all they have is their faith. And I started out by saying what I said because some of you have more than your faith to assist your faith. But there are some who have to believe God every day 
for the very existence. The things that are just common to many of us. Amen. Can I get an amen? So let me know you're there. Amen. Practical, uh, practical things are things that are practical for many of us. Many people don't even have. And so when we look at Hebrews 11 and we look at some of the illustrations and some of the simple stories of the men and women who had passions and lived in the same kind of world which we live and were con confronted by some of the same problems and obstacles that we have today. But like so many of us, glory to God's name, Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. They learned how to master their problems, their obstacles, and not only master them, but learn how to overcome them all. And by doing so, they won a tremendous fulfillment and gained the victory, even our faith, this type of faith that overcomes the world, this particular type of faith, amen. The type of faith that you need today that has been used for many centuries is the same faith that's gonna bring you out of what you're going through. It's the same faith that's gonna cause you to live and not die. And so the biggest characteristic of faith is always anticipating something. I expect something good to happen. On yesterday, on Sunday, we got to the uh, campus here in Sunnyside, Texas, right outside of Houston. I received a call actually before I got to the house of God and was informed that the water was not working. Well, I knew that there was nothing that should stop the water from working. We're on a separate uh, system than the uh, regular system. We don't pay a water bill, uh, and, but we've had problems in the past that we corrected. We had our things serviced, all of our wells in that on last year, a uh, few months back. And so I couldn't figure out what it was. And I immediately began to think that was something simple. You know, when you have problems in life, don't always assume the worst. Don't always think, so you get sick. Don't think, oh, I've got COVID. So you, you, something's going wrong with your car. Don't think, oh, my engine's going down. You know, you have a problem uh, with, you get a call from the hospital about your children, a husband, a family, a mother, someone. Don't automatically assume the worst. Let's assume the best. Let's always anticipate the, the best, not the worst. Let's not be pessimistic. Let's remain optimistic. It deals with your faith. It, let's remain hopeful. It deals with your faith. And so I began to think that it was something simple, electrical problem. We couldn't have anyone out of service and on Sunday. Uh, called on Monday, Sunday, the gentleman that they uh, sent me to a record uh, 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 after I was number, they said they would have someone on, on Monday. They came out on yesterday, and I'm thinking we may have to spend two, three hundred dollars, but uh, it ended up, he said, it's going to be about twenty five hundred dollars that something had broken in the shaft or something underground, and they needed to dig underground. Now, we hadn't had any problems. The, the, the plumbing was working fine, the water was working fine, everything was working fine, but now all of a sudden, it went for me thinking maybe two, three hundred dollars is the service call and the parts that they used before. I immediately said, okay, well, so my next thought when the guy told me was, okay, God, well, we don't really have $2,500 to take care of this, so what are you going to do? By faith, immediately, I gave it to God. I began to pray. I was working, taking care of other business. I didn't let that overwhelm me. I didn't let that stress me out. I began to be hopeful and believe that God would work it out. And so God told me 
So in the midst of me thinking of what to do, I contacted the company and asked them, is it any way that they could do the work and we could pay them later? Uh, the gentleman answered the phone, says, I'm going to uh, 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 call, you have the owner, said, call him back, the owner of the company, who turns out to be a believer, who turns out to be a Christian, and he immediately said, well, what can you all afford to pay? Now, not only was that a blessing, and that's what I was believing God for by faith, that it was going to work out, but I also begin to think, well, God can touch the man's heart and he can say, because we've had it happen before, pastor, don't worry about it. We want to invest into the ministry. We believe that your ministry is promoting the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we need more churches, more people with resources and finances coming together to support, come on somebody say amen, to support the work of God. It doesn't matter if it's in India, in Africa, in China, hello somebody, in the Philippines, wherever it may be, we have to come together by faith and join our faith together to get God to move or to see a move of God, not only in our personal lives, but in the lives of others, in the church, in our communities, in Jesus' name. So I'm always anticipating, they're probably over there working today. We haven't given them any money or anything. Uh, the, I said, do you have our information? And so forth. He says, don't worry about it, Pastor. We have all your information. We'll get started on it. We'll contact you and let you know what it is, and we'll work something out with you. Come on, somebody tell the Lord, thank you. See, faith is the substance of things hoped for. I was believing hoping and trusting that God will work out this situation to where we would not be stagnated because if we're going to have church, whether the plumbing is working or not, if people have to use bathroom before they get there or wash their hands, we're going to have sanitizer and hand wipes or whatever. But the word of the Lord, the gospel must not be stifled or stopped because of uh, circumstances, situations that come up every day. Amen. It's always anticipating and it's always moving faith. And it, 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 it clearly, I clearly expect something good to come out in the future or something to work out in the future. Something very uncharacteristic of faith is not knowing where you're going and not knowing what's coming and not knowing where you're going and what lies ahead. So I guess you can say that without faith, life is a blind march into the future, leading you into a mystery. No, my life is not a mystery. I already believe that what I am doing is going to produce results. I already believe by faith that when I speak it, when I decree it, when I'm living for God and when I'm trusting him, my faith, when I send it out, is going to bring back something. When I send out my faith, it's going to bring back money. It's going to bring back healing. It's going to bring back deliverance. It's going to bring houses, cars, land. It's going to stop devastation by faith. So the first thing we understand is it is impossible to walk by faith or not walk by faith and gain the victory in your personal life and in your future. Amen. You cannot ponder or the enigma necessarily of living day to day knowing what and without knowing what's going to happen. I believe every day that when I wake up that something good is going to happen. Now, I know that things may happen. Situations may occur. But at the end of the day, I always have a regard. I'm not walking on eggshells and pins and needles or having anxiety about what's going to happen or not going to happen because that causes you to move into an area of doubt and unbelief. And so faith believes that God has already revealed something about our future 
Amen. And not everything, but something. In some of our uh, first discussions or classes that we had or talked about on last week, we must understand the voice of God and be in his will in order for to know what he is telling us. When you're not in the will of God, it stifles your stipend, your faith, and you don't have an assurance about what's going to come to pass. According to Romans 10 and 17, and I don't have a lot of time today, it says, so then faith cometh by hearing. You got to be in the word in order to walk by faith and your faith be established and you be established and you be planted like a tree by the rivers of water. Finally, once God has revealed something to you by faith about your future or when you're walking by faith, amen, this revealed knowledge, no matter how big or small, amen, you have to be assured enough that the information that God has given you, the word that God has given you, the things that God has shown you, amen, and you have to move forward with the plan, regardless if you see where God is leading you or not. You know where you're going. Sometimes we just don't know how we're going to get there. So at this point, your faith must seize upon a revealed event and begin to live in expectation, live in anticipation, live knowing that uh, and my expected end, there's an expected end, amen. Live at the appointed time, amen. Live that, amen, that faith, your goal and your purpose gives you a destination. See, my goals and my purpose, it gives me a destinao, amen, an expected end. Amen. So faith also is a glimpse into or uh, gives you a glimpse into your future. If you look at verses 11, 1 through 9, particularly verse 8 in the book of Hebrews. Amen. Let's go there real fast. I know that uh, we had short time today to be with you. There were some things that came up. But thanks be unto God who causes us the trial and gives us the victory. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed, he went out, not knowing whether where he went. He just knew what God said. And my wife said to me the other day, one of our old scriptures that we've also used, throughout years is, amen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Sometimes you just have to be obedient to the word of God. Oh, next week, we're going to pick it up in chapter three, second Timothy. I want you to begin to read second Timothy chapter three, uh, verse one. Matter of fact, read verse two, but we're going to talk about uh, training for Christians. Second Timothy chapter two, verse two says, and the things that thou have heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to be faithful men who shall be able to teach others. We need to be faithful men of God and women of God in order that we may teach others the word of God. Be instant, be ready, be prepared, be diligent and vigilant in the word of God. We're going to talk about on next week the coming apostasy of the church. We'll look at chapter three, verse uh, chapter three, verse one, and we'll go uh, expositorily through it on next week. This know also that in the last days we're living in perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of themselves covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, the word of God says in verses one through three, trouble, 
makers, truth breakers, rather false accusers. Amen. Incontinent, fears, despisers of those that are good. Don't you know that some people despise you for having a standard? Do you not realize there are people that are angry about you living for the Lord and having a, a standard of holiness and dedication to the house of God, dedication to the things of God, de dedication to the lost, those that are hurting and broken. Do you not know there are people that are angry about you and your lifestyle? Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. That sound like anybody, you know. That sound like the world we live in. People want to more concerned about the pleasures of life, having fun than dedicating them lives and suffering for the name of the Lord. That's a bad word to many of you. And here's the final verse. So we'll be in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. I've read 1 through 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. It says, from those people, such, here it is, turn away. From those people that have a form of godliness, Paul refers to those who profess to be Christians and appear to be religious, yet do it, do, do not manifest the power of God that they can save them from sin, selfishness, and immorality. Such people tolerate immorality within their churches, and they teach that a person may practice or live however they want their sins and yet still inherit the kingdom of God and salvation, but they don't have to live any particular, come on somebody, any particular kind of way. He said, from such, turn away from. Amen, God bless you. Bishop Stephen Hamilton here. We had to cut off a little short today, but I know you received something from God's word. And I pray that God will continue to bless you. Let us remember to keep those in prayer in India that are having flooding problems and other parts of the country in Pakistan and India where Christians are being persecuted uh, all over the country. We're being persecuted right here in America. It's just a subtle persecution and you don't understand it yet because you've not been in prayer and you've not been at the feet of the of God, and so you don't have to feed of Jesus, and so you don't understand how we're being persecuted in America right now. Those that are living righteously, because that's what the word tells us, shall suffer persecution. Amen. And we delight in it because this is what we've been created to do: to live and to die, just as Jesus did, and to be resurrected or to live for Christ and be resurrected at his return. I don't know about you, but that's my desire. And that's my goal. That's my motas apparenta. That's my main function in life after, amen, taking care of my family and, 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 and seeing lost souls say, it's for me, my main priority is to make it to heaven and to see Jesus Christ and not to end up in a place where there will be gnashing and weeping and crying and torment for all of eternity. That is not the place for me and is not the place for you. God bless you. Jesus loves you and so do I. May you have a great day. If I don't ever see you again, if you don't ever hear my voice, I'll see you in the rapture. God bless you, woman of God, in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you so much for your wonderful words. And it was a blessing for us. Uh, once again, <coughs> it, uh, it has a uh, powerful anointment when you are speaking the word of God. It was a powerful anointment was there. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you. And tell Pastor I said I'm praying. Okay, and don't forget, to send me that, don't forget to send me that information as well. Yes, yes, I will. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pastor.